Quatro, seis, cinco, E lá no peito E força do primeiro dia E frente a do nome força Categoria sendo rejulgado.
All right, guys, we'll be going live commentary shortly. Start. Starts at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Guys, please remember to like and subscribe so you get notified every time we go live. Brian, it looks like it's a battle between... Um, Raphael and Antonio. Aí, Juan Elias, para a tua apresentação individual. So, guys, they are cutting the music and the sound on and off. It's not me that's doing that. This is the amateur show right now, pro qualifier. Unless it's Classic Physique. Classic Physique is supposed to be on Sunday, so. Apresentação individual, Diego Barbosa, atleta 791. I'll be on live soon, guys. Just getting ready. E agora vamos para a premiação. Categoria Classic Zig Open C. Em quarto lugar, 791, Diego Barbosa. Em terceiro lugar, 368, Guilherme. Em segundo lugar, 608, Juan Elias. Ganha na categoria. 361, Ítalo, agora! E aí o Ítalo Leite levando a categoria Open C, Classic Physique. Campeão e classificado aí para o Overall e custa o teu cartão. Todo mundo está falando. Só o campeão. Obrigado, campeão.
Lá tem Maria Open B. 367 Rafael, 384 Rômulo, 398 Miranda, 399 Jean, 646 Tome, 660 João, 661 Fernando, 694 Lucas, 697 Michel. Esses são os competidores da categoria Classics e que Open D. E agora vamos para os finalistas. Miranda. 399. Jean Souza. 660. João Magalhães. 661. Fernando Batista. 694. E Lucas Alcolinari. 694. Agora vamos para a apresentação individual. Categoria Classics e que Open D. Arno de Sorte América, décima edição. Vem o Miranda, ele já fez sua apresentação individual, agora ele vai para duas coisas ao centro. E o Jean Souza, para a tua apresentação individual. Categoria Clássicos e que Open D. Apresentação individual, João Magalhães. Marca 660. Fernando, uma apresentação individual.
e o Lucas Apolinário para a sua apresentação individual. Categoria clássica de que vou prender. Aí vai sair o um último guerreiro para competir o cooperar valendo cartão profissional. Hein? Quem será que leva? Vamos para a premiação. Em quatro lugar, 660, João Magalhães. Em terceiro lugar, 694, Lucas. Em segundo lugar, 399, Jean. Ganha na categoria 661, Fernando Batista. É isso, arma de esporte mesmo! E aí, o campeão Fernando Batista, campeão da categoria Classic Open D, classificado para o Overall. E já já às 19 horas, as finais do Paulo da categoria Wells Pro e Open Bodybuilding Pro. Olha o paga para o Olímpia, hein? Você que ainda não se inscreveu, se inscreva no nosso canal. Deixe seu like e compartilhe. E agora, o Veral, valendo cartão profissional, hein? Quem será o mais novo? Que é o PT Pro. Claro, mais normal. Classic, sim, sim. These guys are great. De costa, duplo bíceps. Pena de classe, Sul América, décima edição. Só pode clássica. De frente, de frente. Do Brubíceps. De lado, peitoral. São Paulo, cadê o barulho? É a do esporte, Pétima! Encosta, duplo bíceps. De frente, abdômen de coxa. Relaxa. Galera do chat, para quem que vai a torcida aí? Quem será o novo campeão overall e Só mais uma mulher do BB Pro Classic Physique? Campeão do Arnold Sport Festival. DJ, um minuto em postal. Postal. 
São Paulo, Arno de Esporte, Vétimo! Cadê a torcida? Eu não quero ver ninguém calado! Vamos fazer barulho! Lá no palco, lá no palco. Olha, já está definido, hein? Quem será? Premiação, oferecimento de Black School. Quem será o campeão overall e mais novo IEF BB Pro Classic Zip? Arnold Sport, South America. E o atleta campeão overall, Arnold Zip. Recebendo das mãos da Black School. Nosso campeão overall Classic Zip 2024 é. Marcos Rocha! É aí, Marcos Rocha, campeão overall do Arnold Classic South America e mais novo IFBB Pro Classic Zip. Premiação, oferecimento de Black School. Realmente, categoria incrível. Então, verá bem difícil, hein? Parabéns, é o Marcos Rocha. Seja bem-vindo à Liga Profissional. São Paulo! Marcos Rocha. Lembrando que essa transmissão conta com o apoio de Integral Médica, Max Titânio, New Milen, Adaptogen, Black School, Probiotica, Growth Suplements, Muscle Contest World, Simeria, Oficial Fama, Lipoxder, FPW, Tomater, Muscle Contest Store, Laganesha e Darkness. Agora vamos para a premiação da categoria Biquíni Especial, Milena Alencar. Também da categoria Especial Biquíni. Campeã da categoria Especial Biquíni. Galera, aplaudindo ela aqui, hein? Levantando a galera aqui na Expo Center Norte. Eu vou falar em cara. Agora é a categoria Biquíni Teams, 14 aos 19 anos. Ananda e Carla Andréa. Segundo lugar, 877, Carla Andréa, eleitor da categoria Ananda, categoria Bikini Team, campeã, Ananda Belli. de Plastics, South America, décima edição. E agora vamos para a categoria Bikini Junior, dos 19 aos 23 anos. E vamos já para a premiação. Será que vamos ter algo de comparação? Arco Central, o Celso Reis. E vamos para a premiação. Luiane, quinta colocada, atrás de 710. Marisa, quarta colocada. Mia, terceira colocada.
vice-campeã, vai, anda que é grande. E levanta a categoria Raquel Correia. 899 All right guys Getting set up here for the men's open bodybuilding. Agora, categoria Bikini Novaes Se A. Vamos para a premiação. Em 4 da 7, 8, 7, 0, 8. Vai lá. Em terceiro lugar, 7, 5, 2. Márcia. Em segundo lugar, 7, 3, 6. Letícia. Ganha na categoria 8, 9, 9. Sofia. All right. Hmm. Men's bodybuilding should be coming coming up shortly. Thanks again, guys, for joining the live chat, the live stream for Muscle Discord. We always kill it on these live streams, and I appreciate you guys joining in. We get some of the highest numbers on YouTube, so let's do it again. The challenge... I had in the chat for the pre-judging this morning was I wanted to get to 200 likes. So let's push to 300 likes. The more likes, the better. I appreciate you guys so much. Helps with the algorithm. You know how it works. And um, I can keep doing these live streams for you and do the live commentary and give it to you real talk, right? I don't, I don't mess around with my commentary. Uh, I've been in the industry over 20 years. I've managed a lot of pro bodybuilders. So I do have the experience to give it like it is. Two-time Canadian bodybuilding champion and myself. You can see back there. It's no joke. I try to bring it real talk. So appreciate you guys coming in and joining me on this to give my deep dive analysis on the men's open bodybuilding. We'll be doing classic physique tomorrow as well. And I love I love doing this with you guys. You know, I love coming on here and chatting with you guys. And especially for a close show like this. Between Rafael Brandeo, Tony O'Burton, and Good Vito. Um, there's a, uh, a, a show called the Gym Culture Show here in Vancouver that just I just got back from. After prejudging, I went there. I just drove back. Got back here for finals, and I had an interview with uh, IFBB Pro Cody Drobrot. He's a 212 competitor. Had a another interview with Stephen Didoshak. He's another 212 IFBB Pro competitor. He's doing multiple shows this year. And then I talked to Big Ron Partlow for Mutant. He was there. So those interviews will be going up on the channel later. Ron Partlow gave me his thoughts on who he thinks is going to win. He... Gave his thoughts on, you know, Good Vito might win this show. I don't think that's going to happen, but, um, you know, we shall see. And while we wait for the men's open to start, I always like to ask, where is everyone from in the chat here? 
I know we got people from all over the world watching. I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Sweden. Never been to Sweden. Barbados. Never been to Barbados. Would love to go to Barbados. Oregon. Raphael is soft from the back. That's that's what's leaving the door open for Tony Burton. Tanzania. That's awesome. Tanzania. All right. It was a quick show too. It was quick for uh, prejudging because it's a small class. It's not a lot of guys in the men's open. <clears throat> this is bikini master. Okay. I did message uh, Tony O'Burton and told him to put more oil on for the finals. So he should come out to finals with more more oil on for that because he was lacking that in the pre-judging so so was uh good veto rafael had good color good oil but he looked a little soft in my opinion in a lot of your opinions too in the chat we're saying you know rafael doesn't look as good as he did in ohio he's off a little bit he's looks watery chicago illinois charles gamble welcome to the chat if you guys haven't already, please subscribe and like the video. I really appreciate you joining me for the chat for my real deep dive analysis of these athletes. I don't hold back. I do not hold back. All right. I think this is the last class before open. Although it's not supposed to start until three. Well, Bert, is it that Vito just has a big fan base or are people smoking crack? So what do you mean? Do you think his physique is not as good as people are hyping it up to be? Okay, so for bikini, I see they're just doing all the final awards. Oh, no, no. Good Vito's not going to win this show. Good Vito came in good for his uh, pro debut. That's for sure. Um, But uh, definitely not going to win the show. Could he take out Tony O'Burton? Potentially, he could. He might take out, he's more conditioned, right? He is more conditioned, but he doesn't have as good symmetry and aesthetics 
and balance that Tonio brings. And he doesn't have the 3D muscle in the back poses. Tonio beats good video in both pack back shots. You know, so but I mean Vito looks good, but he still has work to do. It's it's probably gonna go to Raphael first, Tonio second, good Vito third, and Andre in fourth. <clears throat> Who do you guys have winning? Do you have Tonio in first or Raphael? Of course, the Brazilians are going to say Rafael all day. And he does have the hometown advantage. But it doesn't seem to have done his physique any good, having that hometown advantage. Yeah, I agree with Wolbert. Uh, I think the judges are going to give it to Rafael. Um, I think that was already set in their minds before he even stepped on stage. But again, if if Tyler Mannion is there, he has to then defend what he does. Because now, after each show, Tyler Mannion is coming online and saying, okay, guys, here's the critique. Here's why this person won and this person got second, third, fourth. So he's going to have to explain why Raphael won. Was he more conditioned, Antonio, in good veto? No. Is he bigger than um, good veto in Antonio? Yes. Fuller muscle bellies, yes. Symmetry, better, yes. So I guess there could be a reasoning as to give Raphael the win. I, I, I haven't heard Steve calling the shots like usually you hear steve's voice so i'm not sure it's just been a brazilian person speaking but maybe we just can't hear him we're just hearing the commentators so i'm assuming tyler Mannion's there I, I agree. I don't think um, Raphael is as symmetrical as Tonio. Tonio has better symmetry than Raphael. Let's just put that at that. You can really see it in the front relaxed pose in the fr uh, front double bicep pose. You can see the symmetry is better on Tonio. Um, Tonio's biceps are a little smaller than uh, Raphael's. So there's that. And then Raphael's legs are bigger than Tonio's. But I mean, Raphael, he needs to just come in shape. Like he, he has such great aesthetics. If he came in shape, no one would question it, but he left the door open because he looks a little watery and soft from the back. It just doesn't look as good. He looked better in Ohio, in my opinion. And I thought he would come in sharper here and then easily win, but that's not the case. All right. We'll see if that was the last class. Sorry, I lost track there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what language that is.
Well, we're, if he looked like he did in Ohio, it wouldn't even be. Yeah, I agree. I think it would be more of a, a clean win for Raphael. But he's in his hometown, and he looks worse, in my opinion. It looks like it could be like Russian or something. Or like, I don't know, Romanian. I don't know what that is. Lab Nutin. What is what language are you speaking there? Well, yeah, Flex Lewis glutes were more shredded than Raphael's when they were posting that video. I think this is bikini overall here, so. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. You sup, hello, what's up? Welcome to the chat. No problem, brother. I love doing this. I love doing the commentary for these shows. And uh, thank you for joining. Guys, again, if you are new to the chat, please remember to subscribe so you get uh, notified every time I go live on these live streams. And please remember to like the video. It really helps the channel. Really appreciate it. The goal is to get to 300 likes. We got over 200 likes last time for prejudging. So let's kill it for finals. All right. All right. Okay, we should be starting men's open bodybuilding, guys. If you're just joining, it's about to start. And usually they go right into it. They're pretty good with the timeline for the show. It's been run pretty well. Okay. You know, my gut tells me that the judges are going to give it to Raphael, but it would be an amazing upset if Tonio beats Raphael here. <clears throat> Remember, they did leave Tonio in the center in the final last call out. They did not have Raphael in the center. They're very short. 
it's it's mainly all the women's divisions and then the men's come on for like 15 minutes and then that's it it's pretty shitty in that respect all right the national anthem for brazil I'm looking at the judges here while they stand up. I don't think I see Steve Weinberger or Tyler Mannion. So I think these are all local. They're not all local, but definitely Steve Weinberger ain't there, which is kind of crazy. There's one, two, three, four guys and three female judges. Guys, thanks again for joining. We are about to start the men's open bodybuilding, I think, or they may do wellness first. We'll see. They did wellness first in prejudging, so they may follow the same format, which means we'll be sitting here for a little bit longer before our men's bodybuilding open starts. <clears throat> I can see the women's hair in their shadows. Someone is slamming their door. I don't know. It's my neighbor. Do we have any Brazilians in the chat here? I haven't seen any crazy Brazilian fans posting the Brazilian flag in the chat. Eric, no, I mean, it is what it is sometimes when you come to these shows overseas over, you know, that are international, um, you don't have the best caliber athletes and you usually just have a few good top pros that are in these shows because it costs money to get out here. It's not easy. Mike, I am Canadian. I'm from Vancouver, BC. Ken Valle is from Brazil there, I see. Where are you from, Mike? It's not bad in Vancouver. It's actually pretty chill over here. You know, there's some rough areas, depending where you go. Windsor, Windsor, Ontario. Might be a little rough out in Windsor, Ontario. <laughs> Just joking. <clears throat> John May is from Connecticut. I've been to Connecticut, actually. Very nice over there. Yep. Eric. Marcos from Sao Paulo. Yusep, I don't know what Bola Bola is. Minnesota. I've been to Minnesota. Nice city. Definitely don't want to go there in the winter. Guys, again, thank you for joining the new, see the chat's getting more and more in here. So thank you for joining. Men's bodybuilding is coming up. Please remember the like, the more likes, the challenges to get to 300. I really appreciate your support. Love you guys. I love you for joining in with me. I'm excited for the men's open because it's going to be a battle. It's very close. I know it's very close. The scorecard's going to be close. Not sure what this is. Gladiator stuff. <clears throat> Not sure if this is necessary. Or bodybuilding opening show. Oh, okay. Muscle contest. I see, I see. Uh, 
All right. I don't think is Arnold there. I didn't see Arnold anywhere. It's kind of weird when Arnold doesn't come to his own show. But maybe he will be here for finals. I don't know. I think he's been there before, so I don't see why he wouldn't be there. Kind of slap in the face to South America if he doesn't show up. Yeah, I heard about Michael. That, that makes no sense. I'm going to look into that. I might do a, a video on it once I get some more details. I've been running around today. So I haven't really got to get the details on that. That, that. that makes no sense whatsoever. He's got like broken ribs. Punched in the face. Like broken ribs is no joke. It's hard. Like that's very uncomfortable injury. Oh, I did not see that, Scott. Is that what they said already? Or was that before the show? I'm assuming that would be before, like a preview. Rafa is bigger. You're, you're definitely noticing the size difference between Rafa and Tony O'Burton. And that's that's what he's got on him. So sure, Rafa's conditioning isn't as good as Tony's or even Good Vito, but he's outsizing both of them and he has better symmetry than Good Vito, that's for sure, but not Tonio. So Tonio's kind of that dark horse where it's like, are the judges going to give it to him? Is it enough? I don't think so. I, I think they'll give it to Rafa because he's got the size, the shape, some conditioning. We'll see if he improves for the finals here. If he looks tighter and better, then for sure he's going to win. If he looks the same and Tonio Burton looks improved, then Tonio could potentially win. But the thing... Too. It might be a close battle between Tony and Good Vito right now. You're right. He did have surgery, so that's why. Good one. Thank you for that reminder. Guitar Battles Live. <laughs> Yeah, good video needs to work on his posing. Tonio too. Tonio needs to work on his, his posing as well. Rafa's okay. He's pretty good with it for the most part. No problem, Eric. Thank you for joining in the chat and the stream. Thank you guys for joining. We're getting more and more in the in the chat here in the stream. I think we got close to a thousand live viewers watching in the last uh, prejudging. So let's go to over a thousand. Let's see if it gets up there. It usually picks up. This is <laughs> is that a joke, <laughs> Mike? Is that a joke? I hope that's a joke. This isn't Fuad. You know how I feel about Fuad. Yeah. I I don't disagree with you, Mike. 
deputado Paulo Menezes, que está aqui junto com a gente também. Yeah, pimping up the athletes. We'll see how long Sam Selleck stays around. See if, uh, I don't know if anyone's going to really want to take on Samson after how he kind of acted there. As a, as a supplement company owner, I wouldn't take on Samson. I know he's a great athlete. Probably going to maybe win the Mr. Olympia one of these years, but if he gets his shit together and gets his head right, doesn't let social media get to him. And I don't know what she's saying. So, but, uh, you know, I think the prize money for this is either 50K or 100K. I think it's 100K. And I know the Arnold UK was 150K. And then the Arnold Ohio was 300K. And then next year, the Arnold Ohio is going to be half a million dollars. Yeah, he's good at the podcast, you know, just talking shit and, you know, whatever. But he does rub people the wrong way. He comes off a little uh, like a douchebag, kind of. I ain't, I ain't afraid to say it. I'll probably see him at the expo at the Olympia. I don't care. I'll go up there and I'll tell you, let's do an interview. Brought up, he'll probably pussy out and he won't do it. There's no reason for Fouad to be the way he is, but either shit has gotten to his head or he's just gotten weird. Yes. I think he is. If I'm not mistaken. Guys, thanks again for joining in. See, we're getting more viewers in here. I want to get the likes to 300 likes, so please like the video. It's very easy to do. We also got donations in the last chat, the last stream. The donations helped me. I want to get a new microphone. I got the Blue Yeti here. I need to upgrade that. So those donations help me upgrade my equipment. Anything, 99 cents, it's easy to do. Dollar fifty, two dollars. I appreciate it. Welcome back, catfish. Just trying to see if there's any updates I can see from the athletes on good veto. All right. All right. It's good. Do my checks. I didn't see anything. Yes, I did. Walbert, I messaged Tonio. He read my message and he's going to have more oil on. I don't know what they're saying. Is there anyone in Brazil that's from Brazil that can speak Portuguese and tell us what they're saying?
or what the premise of what they're talking about is. No problem, young Lee. I do. I speak my mind. I don't give a shit what people think about what I say about Fuad. He's a dick sometimes. Sometimes he can be cool, but sometimes he's a dick. You know, and I was hard on Nick Walker. I said Nick Walker has a big waist. They did multiple, and I did multiple videos on that. And Nick Walker wasn't happy with me when I was doing that. And so I talked to Nick Walker and I said, hey, Nick, it's nothing personal. I just, that's what I think about your physique and you, you need to work on that. And then eventually we were like, you know what? It's all good. Nick said he would come on the show. And uh, we I had to, got to interview Nick Walker. So that was pretty cool. And Nick, Nick Walker talks like it is too. He doesn't hold back. So that's why I like having him on the show. Exactly. And Nick is, is very good with it. Unlike Samson Dada, we all saw what happened there. There's still more to the Samson Dada story. It's cooled down, but I, I do know the truth about what happened and what he did with Milos. It's not a good look. If you guys knew what Samson did, you would not like him anymore. Let me tell you that. But Milos has taken the high road and doesn't want to talk about it. I get it. Doesn't want to cause drama in the industry. I'm sure the judges wouldn't like to know what that is, too. If they did, they'd be like, whoa. That's not cool. But I had a... It's someone that works with Milos on a podcast that called me and said, Hey brother, you're doing a great job on your show. Um, I watched your whole live stream. I watched your whole show on Milos and I got to, you know, so he reached, he DM me and said, Hey man, I want to give you a call. This is a, a legendary IFBB pro bodybuilder. Uh, and he called me and then we talked for like a half hour. He's like, this is what Samson did. It's confidential. But yeah, Milos doesn't want to talk about it. I get it. So it's uh, it's not good. But hey, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. That's on them. I can't release confidential information. I don't want to be that guy. That's what Nick Trujillo used to do. He would get like confidential information and he would tell it to everybody online and like air out the text messages to people. I don't want to do that. This is That's crossing the line. Yeah. It's crazy what happened to, to Nick Tradilli. I should have Nick on the show. I I don't know if he blocked me or not, because we were we were about to have Nick on the show, but he was banned. So we were like, I don't know if it's a good idea to have you on the show. And then he kind of got pissed off. And then I think he blocked me. So <laughs> I don't know. I got I should reach out to Dick. Because I don't think it matters now. There's been so much time that he, if he comes on my show as a guest, it wouldn't get me a strike against my channel. But that would be an epic interview is to have Nick Trujillo on the show. Now that some time has passed by. He blocked me on Instagram. Yes, he did. He blocked me on Instagram. I just couldn't. Just stupid. Samson Dowd blocked me on Instagram, and his wife blocked me on Instagram. So she she was something else, and then I heard people telling me other stories about Samson and his wife and like the control she has over him. And the dirt that she has on Samson. So Samson will do whatever she says because he doesn't want that information to come out or else it will ruin his bodybuilding career. It's pretty bad. It's on some Sean Roden level stuff. 
you guys can, if you know enough about what I'm talking about, you probably understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Jim, I train at my condo gym. Guys, I don't know how you guys go to these public gyms some of these times. There's lots of awesome gyms, but it's just like a lot of these gyms here in Vancouver just can't do it. It's just a, a zoo of people hogging the equipment. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you, these guys are controlled by their wives. A lot of these bodybuilders, because these bodybuilders are very insecure. And Nick Tajuli, or not Nick, Nick Walker even alluded to that. A lot of these bodybuilders are very insecure, and their and their wives are like their controllers. It's just crazy. You have all this muscle, all this power, but then you're very insecure. And it happens. It's, it's that's normal. Mike Cole, no, I didn't hear anything about. Samson doing gay for pay. I know that's what Nick Tragilli did, but not not uh, Samson, from what I know. Nick Tragilli was all over the gay for pay. That's old news. Good life, yeah, no. Oh, Brandon. Brandon's a nice guy, man. I've met him many times, conversations with him in person. Hey, BC kid, what's up? guys remember the likes please like the video appreciate it. it helps the channel i want to get over 300 we're close to 100 right now can brandon crack the top four again actually yeah i think he could i mean he he was in the hospital and then ends up fourth at the olympia after like having to drink water and fluids and right he almost died so <laughs> he's I think he can do top five again this year. He's he's serious, he's focused, he's coming back, he's gonna compete again this year. Um I'm gonna have Tony O'Burton on after this show. He said he'd come on the show after the Arnold Brazil, and we're gonna talk about the New York Pro. I'm going to ask him some serious questions because Nick Walker got to talk a lot of shit about Tony O'Burton saying that Tony O'Burton's the size of his arm. So uh, we'll see. It's going to be hard to beat Nick Walker. He's a freak. If you think Raphael's big, Nick Walker is on another level of thickness and mass. But aesthetically pleasing wise, Tony O beats Nick. So we're going to see. But I'm pretty sure bet that Nick Walker will beat Tonio. I haven't made my prediction yet. I want to see Nick closer to the show. 
like two weeks out. I always do my predictions now, like the week before the show, like five, six days out. I'll do a predictions video because things change so much. People drop out of the show. They get injured, whatever. So I wait. But, uh, you know, this is the spur of the moment. Arnold's son. Ele falou, ó, oh, desculpa que eu tô muito casual, mas eu tô honrado de estar aqui no palco representando meu pai e estando aqui no Brasil ajudando com essa mensagem. Yes, so I, I really appreciate all the hospitality and the love. Everyone has been so beautiful here. I'm so excited to come back every year for the Arnold Classic South America. And I just really appreciate how amazing Brazil has been. And I love it. I love you guys. I love South America. So thank you. Ele apreciou e viu toda a emoção do brasileiro. Ele está tão feliz. E ele não vê a hora de continuar vindo aqui. Yes, this is the, the child of the woman Arnold slept with his maid. This is the result. I was hoping to start pretty soon. Oh, let's listen to Arnold. Yeah, man, he's because Arnold's going to not be around much longer. So he's got to build that legacy. Right. Hopefully he lives till he's 90 plus. Who knows? But. You know, he's got to get ready because he's not going to be here. In another 20 years, we don't know. So he's got to build it now. Just they may bring wellness out. I don't know. We'll see what they do. And I think classic physique is tomorrow, which I will be streaming the classic physique tomorrow, guys. That should be a pretty competitive class. Classic physique. Uh, what do I think about Nick Walker's legs? I'm not a fan of his legs. They're just a little choppy looking. He needs more quad sweep. He's got good hamstrings. And he needs more separation in his quads. Jay Jet Sterling. Yeah, good video needs to work on his tan and his oil. So does Tony O needs more oil. Finals is going to start soon, guys. Should be coming on right now. Yeah, they're going to do wellness first. But they should just be doing wellness awards, so that shouldn't take that long. Unless they're going to rejudge wellness here. Yeah, the best coast veins they look a little nasty. Thanks, Brian. I agree. The more likes, the more subscribes, the better. Although I have got lots more subscribes while I'm doing the live stream, so I appreciate it, guys. Um, but the likes, the donations, they do help. I really appreciate it. Brian always kills it on the donations. I think Brian's tapped out for donations on this one. But thank you, Brian. You're, you're the man. I think I'm going to make Brian my official moderator for the. Uh, if get any crazies in here. Although everyone's been good. 
been good in the uh the chats no crazies there's been no trolls in the chat it's all good love in here good vibes but it's going to get real talk when the men's open comes on that's for sure Um, I, I don't, I don't think Nick Walker's used SEO in his arms. No, he's got really wicked biceps. That's just a genetic thing. His arms are just a freak. And Nick Walker is only five foot seven, same height as me. Right. It's like pretty crazy. And he's like two, he was 282 when I interviewed Nick on the show here. And he's probably going to be 260s on stage at the New York pro at five foot seven and Tony O'Burton's in the two twenties at five foot seven. So you can see the size gap that Tony O'Burton's going to be faced with when it comes to Nick Walker. So they're just read, read judging the women's wellness here. So we have a little bit of time, guys, before we go into men's open. But that, that, that don't come. Don't worry. It's coming up here. Predictions for the Olympia. I can't do predictions for the Olympia yet because we still have people that are qualifying for the Olympia this year. Um, but if it's Derek Lunsford, Hottie Chupon, Nick Walker, Samson Dauda, if Andrew Jack qualifies, he may not qualify. Hunter Labrada. Um, then you have Crizo and you have Tonio. Um, Brandon Curry. You know, right now, if if uh, the judges like Derek Lunsford, they've already made that clear. Um, but if we see an improved hottie, the version of, that we've seen hottie at the Arnold's here this year, I think he pushes Derek a lot more and makes it a lot harder for the judges to give it to Derek Lunsford because hottie Schupan is disgustingly shredded from the front and then he's shredded from the back more so than he was in 2023 at the Olympia. Is that enough to beat Derek Lunsford? Derek Lunsford's had another year to get bigger. Maybe figure out something with the, you know, the front side of his body with conditioning. And he can hold off Hadi Shupa. Um, so my prediction is leaning towards Derek Lunsford's going to win again because the judges just seem to love his physique. And once they love their physique, you're, they, you don't have to do too much. You don't have to do too much to be a reigning Mr. Olympia and get two, three, four, five, six titles under your belt. So, and I could see Derek doing that. I could see him doing that. He's young. People forget how young he is. And he can just get better and better and harder and harder and develop that chest better and bring up the legs a little bit more from the front. You know, he's going to be hard to beat. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm leaning. I would still have Hottie in second if he can't take out Derek. And then I'm not too sure about Samson now. I'm not too sure about how the judges feel about his physique and um, where it's headed. You know, he needs to get some more back thickness and width. Tyler Mannion said that. But then you got Hunter Labrada, who is big right now and looks very good at 290 and so he's definitely gonna be bigger this year is that gonna result in a more refined looking physique it might not because he's put on so much muscle so we'll see but i think hunter can definitely be in the top six for sure um brandon curry if he comes in shape and has no problems like he did last year he could he could have beat samson last year if he had a little bit more in him so it's going to be a battle for the Olympia.
All right, I'm just checking through updates here, guys. Men's open bodybuilding is coming up. Okay, let me read some of the comments here. I'll go back up to Gary. Tonio's great, but they aren't in the same lane yet. Nick is fighting to win the old Tonio's fighting. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, did Hunter's guest posing at 290? Yeah, he did. Hunter impressed me. At, he looked very good, in my opinion. Um, the Dubai show is the battle between uh, Nexilla and Andrew Jacked. Yes. That's going to be a battle. I'm predicting that next Zilla is going to be Andrew Jack. That's a controversial call, but I think I like what I've seen from next Zilla. I don't like what I've seen from Andrew Jack lately, and I'm seeing him training now, and I'm still not impressed with what he's doing. He doesn't look like he's serious. So we're going to see. Super Tan, Super I can't see that. Hardy versus Derek is going to be insane. Agreed. Keon should do the open. No, he's not not ready for the open. Um, I think the gap between them in the back shots are closer than difference from the front. That's true. I agree. All right. All right, man. Okay, I might as well do a bathroom break before the men's open comes. Since they're doing the women's well, uh, yeah, wellness. Okay, guys. So I'll turn up this volume. I'll be right back in two minutes. <laughs> Coisa fora do comum vira pro, é um sonho quase que inalcançável. Agora é uma realidade. Nesse final de semana, sete novos atletas vão se tornar profissionais. Então isso renova todo evento novo pro Qualifier, uma nova leva de atletas profissionais. E com a gente também tentando o Brasil que a gente vai apresentar fora. Competir num evento como esse, ganhando ou perdendo, é retorno de visibilidade. Olha quantas pessoas estão aqui atrás de nós, vendo a pessoa no palco. Fora essa transmissão ao vivo aí, com mais de 12 mil pessoas assistindo. Então, é uma forma de E vai ter uma dessas, por exemplo, aqui ó, na Wellness, uma atleta recente que se tornou pró, tem a oportunidade de posar ao lado da Rayane e Fogal que já chegou no topo do Olímpia. Olha que belo registro ela vai ter para mostrar o trabalho dela. Exatamente. Está acontecendo agora com a Valdir Lopes fazendo hoje seu pro debut e competindo ali no primeiro round junto com a Raia. Sendo uma surpresa do dia. Imagine o quão valorizado vai ser o trabalho dela a partir de hoje. All right, guys. I found out that uh, James Holling said is doing the uh, Detroit Pro. I didn't think he was doing the Detroit Pro. Terminal camera back here.
ma troverò la vita tra Paolo c'è di sera All right. Sem dúvida, e trato o seu abdômen dela com uma definição sutil, nada agressivo demais. Isso valoriza muito também ter uma definição razoável, não muito hard. Não, ela não pode ter, né? Let me catch up on the comments here, guys. Yes, BC Kid, I agree with that. If Tabani can make it to the... Uh, to the uh, U.S., it's game over for a lot of guys. Although Tabani still needs to bring up his his quads a little bit, quad sweep. But uh, yes. Uh, Walbert, is Yusef asking? What's Yusef asking? Um, Rubio might be in the top eight at the Olympia. I said Rubio can be the top six. It all depends if he's if he's coming in condition. Because he guys, he is a freak. Dexter Jackson, Kevin LeBron, Chris Cormier, they're all saying this guy is something they've never seen before. And they've seen it all. They've seen Ronnie up like it's Right, they're not. They wouldn't say that if they didn't mean it. Especially Dex, Dexter Jackson. He was like, "You better watch out for this guy." Yeah, Rubio has a bigger waist, but so does Nick. So does you know Samson's a little bloated sometimes in his stomach. His waist isn't that big. He just needs to get broader delts. There was a costume malfunction. What? What ha what did I miss? Did the bikini top pop off or something? <laughs> what happened? And of course I missed it. Okay, what's that? Uh James. Yeah, so James is doing the Detroit. Detroit. Um, who else is doing the Detroit now? I'm forgetting who's doing Detroit. Oh, um, Justin Rodriguez is doing Detroit. Oh, yeah. Matt Sinkerang, that's my name. Yeah, Rubio's mindset, you know, there he's over there. You know, how's he going to do over there by himself, right? So
Oh. James Hollingstead is doing the Detroit Pro. So again, I didn't know. And then I went to uh, talk to Ron Parlow and uh, James is doing the Detroit Pro. He's flying out there like days before the show. He's going to be at Body Power, uh, at FIBO. And then right after FIBO, he's flying to Detroit. So James Hollingstead is doing the Detroit Pro. Yeah. Man, the wellness is taking a while. It's okay. We can get through it, guys. I like the wellness division. It's just... Uh, takes a little time. Crazy legs and glutes. It's like there's veins in her hamstrings. No, it's at seven. So it it started on time. But then they had like a 30 minute speech at the beginning. Which is normal for the Arnold and at the finals. Sometimes I'll have like a speaker, like, you know, Hall of Fame, inductee, whatever. And then the show starts. I don't know how many more there is for women's wellness. John, yes, Tonio's doing the New York Pro. I'd say we're going to be seeing men's open in like 10 minutes. I think Quinton's doing the New York Pro, yes. But not confirmed. Sorry, yeah, Quinton Beastwood, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's been posting, Nick's been posting updates on uh, Instagram. You know, he looks pretty good. I still think the waist hurts him. You know, but he's he's pissed off. He wants to win. He wants to be the Mr. Olympia. So he's he's training hard and he's gotten bigger. He's going to be bigger this year. So we're going to see if that weight went to his waistline. Hopefully it didn't. And then, you know, we'll see from there. Okay. Okay. We're wrapping up here. We're wrapping up here with women's wellness. I said 10 minutes. We might be on time with 10 minutes. Guys, if you're new to the chat, please remember to like the video. It really helps the channel. And subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I always do the live streams on these, these IFBB Pro shows. And I have exclusive interviews with the top names in bodybuilding. Nick Walker, Sean Ray, you name it. Sean Clarita, two-time 212 Mr. Olympia, um, and much more. Uh, on my channel 
Uh, I have some big names lined up um, coming up. So lots going on here at Muscle Discord. And uh, just getting things rolling with my channel. I've been a year into this, year and one month now. I started this channel March 1st, 2023. So it's been been going awesome with you guys. And I really appreciate all your support. So the more likes on the video, the better. Okay, so this is the final five here. I think the black girl. Let me just see you in turn around here. I mean, she's tall, but she looks good. All right. We're getting close, guys. We're getting close. Um, Carlos Thomas Jr. That is another interview I'm working on, guys. Carlos Thomas Sr. sent me a message. Just as of yesterday, sent me a message. And uh, just wanted to kind of say, hey, man, you're doing a great job with Muscle Discord. Keep it up, which was kind of out of the blue. Yeah. Carlos Thomas Sr. messages me. I was like, okay, thanks. I was like, that's awesome. Thank you for you know reaching out to me. And then I said, you know, I'd love to have you both on the show together to talk about what happened uh, with Carlos and why, you know, he didn't make it to the Arnold and, you know, his health. And then uh, his Carlos Thomas Sr. told me that there's, there's some things going on and he's recovering from that. And he's not ready to come on the show right now, but he'll he'll be ready later after he heals and gets his mind right and everything. So that'll be a really good interview to have Carlos Thomas Jr. on the Muscle Discord podcast and um, pick his brain. Because, man, that guy has all the potential in the world. So I might have him and his dad on the show, which would be pretty cool. I'm working on having Wesley Vissers on the Muscle Discord, Discord podcast as well. That's coming up. So, yeah, some big names coming on. Maybe Wesley Vissers is the next Arnold Classic Physique Mr. Olympia. We'll see. Yes. Death in the family. So, you know, it's hard. And you're all the way in there in Brazil, away from your family. So that's unfortunate. Because, man, Carlos, what would have that have done to this show? You know, it would have mixed it up more. You know what? That's the thing, too, with Carl's... Sorry, my neck is a bit stiff. Uh, he's got that... The, I don't know if it was colitis or an issue with his stomach and his digestion. digestion. Uh, that's tough because you have to eat so much food as a bodybuilder. And it's not like that is going away. He's always going to have to deal with that. And it, it always gets him, it always flares up closer to the show. So I don't know. He That may be like, man, maybe he's going to be like, I can't, I can't be a bodybuilder. I can't do this because I got to push myself. He can do like to a certain point, but then when he gets really close to the show, six weeks out, five weeks out, it starts hurting him. And, you know, what do you do? Can you get around it? I don't know. I hope you can. We're getting there, guys. We're going to see. I definitely don't think Good Vito's beating Tonio. That's for sure. 
although it is close, but good Vito's uh, side chest is just not there. Back double bicep, he's losing. Back lat spread, he's losing. Side tricep, he's losing. Front lat spread, he's losing to Tonio. So yeah, there's not, that's not a question. Maybe the one shot he takes out Tonio was the front double bicep. But that's about it. Abin's eye goes to Tonio. Okay, guys, we're getting close to 100 likes. Please, more likes. I appreciate it. It's easy to do. While we wait for the men's bodybuilding to come on, just go ahead and like the video. Some guys like Good Vito and Seabum just dislike the way their backs look. Yeah. Yeah, Good Vito's back needs more of the 3D pop like Tonio's back does. But that just means more time in the gym. He's got a great back. Like he's got width. He's wider than Tony. He's wider than Tonio and Raphael. When Good Vito stands relaxed, front relaxed, you can see how broad his shoulders are. Yeah. Oh, I missed that one, Walbert. Carlos' shape is amazing, but his height and his back are kind of eliminating him. I mean, he's, I think he's a little bit shorter than Derek Lunsford. He might be 5'5, five, 5'6. Five, five, so, I mean, you can't say it's limiting him if Derek Lunsford is the same height, but. And he has the same type of front double bicep as Derek Lunsford with tight waist, huge flaring lats. Arms, I would say, maybe are better than Derek's. So, and he, he can get conditioned, so he can be a threat if he gets his health on point. All right. Is this the finals awards here? What's going on? All right. We're... Okay, here we go. Awards. We are almost done here, guys. Men's bodybuilding is up next. Who is going to be more improved? Tony O'Burton? Good Vito? Or Raphael Brad Dale. I don't know if you can hear my stomach growling. I have not had time to eat. So going into that mid-afternoon dip here, energy-wise. But I will get through it. Uh, the Master of Analytics... If Keon Pearson makes his open debut, should be real threat to everyone. Uh, no, I don't think, I think Keon wouldn't do that well yet in open bodybuilding. I think uh, he needs more back thickness, chest thickness, and just overall size on his, on his entire body. Um. I don't think he's at the top of his weight class yet in 212. Maybe he is. And I do think Sean Clarita can beat him this year. Sean is relentless and he's pissed off. I had Sean Clarita on the Muscle Discord podcast after he lost to Keon 
Pearson, and he's a man on a mission. And uh, I'll probably get him back on again, closer to the Olympia, to see how he's doing. And, uh, you know, he knows what he needs to work on. He knows his midsection is a little bit of an issue now. So it will be interesting to see. It's going to be a battle. Like, he's going to be fighting for it. There's no way Clear is just going to let him take another one from him. Keon is not taller than Derek. I think roughly maybe the same same height, maybe an inch shorter. I have an Amazon delivery coming, so I just want to make sure it doesn't ring. Checking. No. All right, guys. Final announcement here for women's wellness. I love those trophies, though. I kind of have a similar one in the background there. It's Mr. Canada, classic physique that I won. I don't compete anymore, though. I am retired. Sean Clarita is, yes, I think he's 40 now. 39 or 40. But Sean Clarita has done an open show and won. So he beat Regan Grimes and Sergio Olivia Jr. I think uh, Beharus Tabani is a freak and he can, I think he'll definitely win a pro show this year. Is Beh is Tabani doing the, the, the Dubai pro? I can't remember. That would be a good show for him to do. Um, and then, uh, if he gets his visa thing sorted out, but I kind of think once your visa is like denied, you're never going to get into the U S because they deny you based on either improper paperwork or there's something in your history that they don't like. And they're like, you're not coming to the U S so it kind of sucks for him. The Mr. Olympia is in the U S can only do so much. He can come to Brazil and do the Brazil art. He's done that before. So, but that's about it. If he never gets his visa sorted out. All right. There's your winner, women's wellness. Men's open bodybuilding next. I think Beharus can beat Samson. You know what? Samson has a lot to prove now because he could potentially start to take a downward trajectory if he doesn't get his shit together and figure out how to peak his physique. Because I don't care what his wife says or has done, she hasn't done what is needed for him to win the Mr. Olympia. Um, she didn't do enough for him to win the Arnold UK. And with a physique like that, you should be able to win any show you enter as Samson Dota. But when you can't get your glutes striated, it's unfortunate that's the new standard, but it is. And He's not bringing it down there. And that's the one thing the judges say. Hey, brother, you need more conditioning. 
in the back. Figure it out. It's right there for you to for you to take the Mr. Olympia title. No one can touch you in your shape. If I was Samson Dowd, I would be like, okay, I have to get shredded goods. Shredded goods. What do I gotta do? I can be the best in the world. But he doesn't do it. He doesn't push himself past that limit. <laughs> so, okay, this guy's making out with his girlfriend. All right. Or his coach. I don't know if they're but that was weird if that was this is her coach. <laughs> okay. Uh get, get focused here again. Yeah, he does 45 minutes of cardio. Some guys can do that. Some guys can do that and get shredded glutes. But if you do that and you don't get shredded glutes, then you have to do more cardio. Ronnie Coleman had to do it. Jay Cutler had to do all the hour, two-hour cardio. They just had to do it, unfortunately. And they were bigger bodybuilders. So it has to be, it has to be done for Samson, unfortunately. And he wants to do 30, 45 minutes and have his coffee and three eggs in the morning and thinks he's, that's going to work. It's not working. Franco, thank you for joining. Welcome to the chat. We are about to get started here with men's open bodybuilding. Okay, here we go, guys. Posing routine. He looks good. First impressions for the finals here. He's not as tight as he was at the Arnold, Ohio. But he looks good. He's got great genetics. You can see here... You can see here the backside, the glutes and the hamstrings. They're soft. Even right there. Like, it's not... Something's missing there, guys. But he's got great aesthetics from the front. He's crazy. He's got very round chest. All right. Okay, so he's pulling out the tears. Maybe that'll give him some points for the judges because he's in Brazil and he's crying on stage. So the judges will be like, okay, okay, we'll just give it to Rafael. We can't do this, dude. He's, cry he's crying on stage, guys. We can't do this. He looks good. He looks improved from the pre-judging, which is what he needed to do he looks better from the front, but he still looks the same from the back. What do you guys think? Those tears, though, were those real tears? I don't know. Is he trying everything he can to do in this show to make the judges feel sorry for him? Okay, let's see if Tonio has the oil as I recommended to him. Hopefully he listened. If not, I will be upset. There it is. <laughs> there is the oil. He listened to my... Damn, that's good. That's good. Look at the difference it makes. There we go, brother. He knows what's up.
he looks much better with this oil. I'm telling you, it's the small details that that add up. Wow, nice front lat spread. The back, look at the veins in the back. Wow, he looks fuller here. Obliques are tighter. Wow, he filled up. He's more vascular. Look at the veins in the upper back. Wow. Look at the glutes, the hamstring. Damn. That back double bicep is... Wow, look at the Christmas tree there. Guys. Wow. The abs. The obliques, bro. No, stay back in the box, Tonio. That's the better lighting. Don't come forward. Stay back. There's the better lighting in the back there. Wow. Guys, I'm I think I'm more impressed with Tonio. Tonio improved more than Raphael did in the back. Tony looks good from the front, too. You guys, like, so why, why can't he win this show? Fucking Tonio looked drier. The oil was better. He was fuller. This crazy deep striations in the in the lower back Christmas tree was there. Raphael doesn't have that. Come on, man. Like, you got to bring this shit. You want to win the Arnold Brazil. And you can't just have a nice aesthetics. You have, like, Samson Dowda has nice aesthetics. But when another conditioned guy with better aesthetics stands next to you, I don't know. You might get beat. I guys, I'm I, I'm not, I'm not joking. We're gonna see him st stand side by side, and we're gonna see. We're gonna see. There's breaking news. Did Israel just attack Iran? What the hell happened here? Anyways, getting sidetracked. Good veto. Good veto has more oil on. Has good video improved more from the prejudging? Let's see. Uh, he needs to work on his posing. That's a crazy vacuum he can do, though. Give him props on the vacuum. I think, yeah, I think good video looks the same. Maybe a little bit more oil on. Don't come closer to the stage as that's where the lighting is not good. So he's not doing that. He's unfortunately standing in the non-lighted section of the stage. Yeah, I, a good video is not beating Tonio. We 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 can we could all see that. Good Vito is not beating Tonio Burton. I'm really impressed with Tonio. From what I've seen individually, right now, Tonio is ahead. It's gonna say it. We're gonna see in the comparisons what the judges do because in the pre-judging they left Tonio in the center. And they had Brandeo off to the side. But sometimes they play mind games. But why why do that? You know, why do that? I don't there's no reason to do that. If 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 Brandeo is the clear winner in prejudging, you keep him in the center. They didn't do that. 
Hey, we may be saying, oh, well, it's Brazil. There's a bias. Maybe there's not. Maybe they'll be like, you know what? Sorry, Brando, it just isn't your day. I know you're from Brazil. I know this is your hometown. But you didn't do the work. You should have been shredded to the bone for this show, Brando. You should have killed it for this show. But again, when you see them by themselves in the individual around there, sure. Okay. When they stand side by side, you see the size comparison with Raphael. He's got size on these guys. So is that overwhelming them? The judges will be like, man, this Raphael's bigger though, man. It looks so I don't know. I don't know what play they go. Are they going for conditioning? Then they should. Conditioning into symmetry, that should go to uh Tonio, this guy has to get rid of the gyno. He needs to take care of that ASAP. Get that taken care of, brother. Hey, Juan Garcia Jr., welcome to the chat, brother. Thank you for joining. Remember to like the video and subscribe. Guys, I love you. I appreciate it. Man, that guy, don't, come on, brother. It's, this looks uncomfortable. You can't hide it. Some guys have gyno and they, you know, you can see it in some shots and some others you can't. This guy, you see it every pose. He's in great condition, though. Yeah. Too, too much going on there. The guy, you know. Definitely, if I'm a judge and I see that, I'm like, I'm marking you down. You got to know what you're doing. You got to take that shit, take care of that shit. It's disgusting. You don't need to see it on a pro stage. You should know better by now. You're a pro. You've got it this far. You should know that's not a good look. It's not healthy looking. It's not pleasing to look at. You should be marked down for that. So guys, who do you have winning? Do you have do you still have Raphael winning or are you more impressed now with Tonio? And is Tonio gonna win this? Leave a comment in the chat. Let me know. Brian Astro says Tonio, 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 Tonio. I'm I'm leaning towards that after what I saw, but I have to see them standing next to each other. Brandeo, Frenchy Benny says Brandeo. Antonio, master of analytics. Yeah. Things just got a lot closer now in the finals here. Because Tonio made the changes with the oil. But Tonio may look too small standing next to Raphael. I, I agree with that, and we're going to see. But with the polish and the oil, does that help? Or did the judges be like, we already know Tonio's smaller. He needs more size. We're going to give it to Rafa. I agree with that. I, 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 just can, I can see them doing it. It's Brazil. But with Hadi Chupan winning and having that conditioning win and beat a bigger guy like Samson Dauda who has better aesthetics, maybe they're changing their mind and be like, no, we're going with conditioning now. Richie White, I agree. Rafa did look improved from the front. He's harder and drier from the front, but that backside... That backside didn't look any better. If not, it looked maybe a little worse. I don't know. Was not impressed. 
to me, in my heart, I want to give it to Tonio because I just feel like he, he brought it and everything looks good from the front and back. What an amazing story it would be. Tonio won tonight. I hope so, Richie. I hope so. Hey, again, I keep going back to prejudging and keep them keeping Tonio in the center. Like, why do they do that? Why? Why didn't they just put Raphael in the center if he's going to win? <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. They're trying to they're playing mind games, it's working. True. Um, I'm I'm thinking this is a one or two point show between I mean, I would think it could be a bigger gap. Could be five points, six points. And maybe we just don't know, but we're gonna see the scorecard. But um I think this is very close. And I'm excited to see the compulsories and the comparisons. Yeah, it would be good to have Tonio win this and then have lots of momentum going to New York Pro. Can Tonio beat Nick? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. That's a tough one. Okay, William Martins. I know we have a lot of fans for William in here. Um, just that midsection. He looks to be the same as prejudging. He could use more oil. You just see how high his lats are on his torso. And then the wide waist makes it even worse. But other than that, look at the chest, look at the arms. It's ridiculous. The freak factor he has, the mass, the, the ridiculous hamstrings, and the size to his legs. But that's about it. He's just one of those crazy looking physiques that look crazy. That they look like they're the Mr. Olympia in the gym, but then they get on stage. It's, this is what we see. That midsection just is a brick, right? We got crazy legs, crazy delts. Look at how huge his delts are. The chest. It's just unfortunate. Sometimes that happens when you try and put on so much size. That's what happens to your waist. Everything grows in your body. So this guy just won his pro card in the amateur show yesterday. So he's just up here having fun, doing his first pro show. Obviously, he needs more size in the quads. He needs size all over the place. To me, he looks like he could do 212. Okay, let me go back up in the comments. Tricia, you are talking as if Raphael is without any conditioning. He's got conditioning. It's just that Tony was in better shape than him. Let's not... Discount that. Tony was in better shape than Raphael. Good Vito is in better shape than Raphael. Think about that for a second. From a conditioning, just that category on its own, he's being beat by the two other guys. Usually when you win the show, you're the most conditioned guy. Especially from the back. Look at Derek Lunsford. Most conditioned guy from the back. Derek Lunsford wins the show. Hadi Shupan was the most conditioned guy from the back. 
at the Arnold Ohio and UK for the most part wins the show. Now, good Vito has a big smile on his face as if he's looks like he's going to win, but uh, don't think that's going to happen. Raphael just gave a nod to the judge. Jarrett's like, we got this, right? We, we we're, this, this is mine, right? He's like, yeah, I, I saw that. I saw it. <laughs> Maybe he's winking to somebody else in the in the the crowd, but I was like, oh, he's looking at the judge. He's like, remember what we talked about? I'm just joking. Well, the overall most conditioned guy at the Arnold was Hari Shupar. That's for sure. Now, do some guys have like body parts that were more conditioned? And some, maybe. Maybe I think De La Rosa's glutes were more peeled than uh, Hari Shupan's. Maybe even Mo Shaban had more shredded glutes. But overall, the entire physique, no. That would go to uh, Hari Shupar. Sure, yeah, he's having fun up there, which is good to see. A lot of these guys are on stage and they, they're like so serious, right? They don't smile. But so it's good. Good Beatles having fun. These are just the like second call out guys here. This like sixth through ten, I think. Guys, again, thank you for joining. The more of you are coming out on here. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate you guys. We're about to see the comparisons between Good Vito, Tonio, Andre, Raphael. That's coming up. I, I think Raphael can lose a little bit more water and just come in shredded and his shape is so good he should he'll easily win, but he doesn't do that. He didn't change from the Arnold Ohio to here. He had so much time to get tighter. And he didn't he didn't get tighter. Hey Brian, again, you are the bad. Thank you for the donation. If anyone wants to match Brian's donation, I would appreciate it. It's a joke. But anything is, is great. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This isn't like the official call out. This is just them doing in in order of how they came out. Man, Tony looks good. The oil helps so much. Raphael, Rafa's in the better lighting right now. You can see it's darker on the far side of the stage where Tony is. You know, I think it's it's Rafa's hamstring. The shape of his hamstring is what throws me off. When you see Tonio's hamstrings, it's like a Dexter Jackson. It looks right. It looks the right way, but Rafi is a little weird. He's, he's lacking somewhere there. Mike, I haven't asked since Tornado to come on the podcast. I could. I do wish that... Uh, Tony would squeeze his quad down to see the feathers and the quads. All right. I think they will do the first call out now.
There you go, Setter. Keep it there. We'll see what they do. They're just calling them out. They better call Rafael out if they... Oh. It's over, guys. Rafael won the show. It's done. This is for second and third. It, it, if there's a bias, we're seeing it right now. There it is. It's done. It's just bullshit. They need to have Raphael in that lineup and compare them all. I hope they do. I mean, they will. I'm sure they will. But, like, come on. This is for second and third. This is some bullshit. This is some bo Brazilian bias bullshit. You tell me that Raphael's so good, he just dominated them that there's no reason to compare them? Are you kidding me? They better bring him out and compare him to Tony Burton. I'm going to make a video. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to call out the judges. I'm going to be like, this is disgusting to watch. Because let's just wait. Maybe I'm overreacting. Let's just wait. Let's see what they do here. Look at how much better Tonio looks than Good Vito, though. The polish, the oil, the, the, the details, the posing. Let's just focus on these guys. Let's give them their attention here. Yeah, Tonio definitely takes second. Oh, did I overreact? I think I overreacted. I overreacted. Take it back. Okay, this is actually kind of good that we get to see side by side each guy, just one on one, like a like a battle royale. Okay. They're seeing how it compares, but now they're gonna bring Tonio out and compare him to Raphael, I'm assuming. You can really see the shape difference here where good Vito is choppy like look at that he needs to work on his posing i don't know why he's posing his lat spread like that he's not putting one leg back that's the weirdest lat spread i've seen you need to put one leg back side tricep that goes to Raphael. so Raphael def definitely takes out good Vito. Okay, what's next here? Looks like Raphael's maybe getting tighter as he poses more. This is weird though. I this is they've done this before, but it, it throws everyone off when they do this. So they're gonna bring out Tonio. Oh, here we go. Now it's game time. You know what's up, Tonio. Look at the front lat. Look at the front relax. Tonio looks great there. Okay, front double bicep. I give the front last spread to Tonio. Man, the side chest looks better on, like, Tonio's improved with the thickness. Man. I, I... Okay, this is over. We don't need to even look at these, but let's take a look. Wow. Look at when they pull the back, the Christmas tree. Yeah, uh, Tonio. Let's go, Tonio. Look at the Christmas tree. Boom. 
Cody was winning both of those poses. Side tricep. Tony was posing that incorrectly. I'll have to talk to him about that. Ooh. Tony has better abs than Raphael. But I think they're giving this to Raphael because they're comparing them to Raphael as not the other way around. <laughs> Tony knows he's like, man, I got this, but they're giving it to Rafi. It's too bad. That's too bad. Damn, it's tight. It's a tight show. Oh, that was it. That was it. I said, come on. We've been waiting this whole time. We watched like an hour of the women's wellness as they went round after round after round. And then they come out and they do a couple little shots and then it's done. Like, this is fucking, I'm going to make a show. Of, of, I'm going to make a an episode about this. This is this ridiculous how they barely give these guys. Like, where was Andre in the fourth? Like, why didn't they do top four and do some comparisons there? No, Tony was in second. That's easy and clear to know that. He was standing uh, the last comparison with Raphael for a second there. So, but this is this ridiculous what they're doing. I mean, what was this like 15 minutes of the men's open? And then it's done. And then women got like 45 minutes. It's not good, guys. That's it. They're doing the awards already. That's a week. That was a weak comparison round. Here we go, guys. It was too fast. They could have done more with that. They could have had to bring out top four and do the comparisons and move them around. And keep, I want to see them all lined up together. Three of them lined up together. They just did two. Like, what the fuck is that? Man, good Vito has a permanent smile on his face. That's, that's great. Raphael knows he won. Good Vito thinks maybe he's in second. But Tony Burton's clear second, in my opinion. But good, good pro debut for Good Vito. Looks great. Flex Lewis. First of all, it's great to be back in Brazil. This has been by far my best experience yet. Brazil, thank you for taking me into your home. This is part of my home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Falando que tá super feliz de estar de volta aqui. Que ele é lógico, adoro o Brasil. Essa é a melhor experiência dele. Flex. Yes, they're not. So, hey, are you guys going to compete one more time to get out, get out of retirement? What do you think? Eu perguntei ontem se o Correia e ele vão fazer mais uma luta e ele vai sair do, da aposentadoria. Well, uh, Eduardo will talk about doing a last dance. I said it could be anything, hip-hop, samba, whatever you want. But, <laughs> for me, listen, I have the passion, I have the love. This is going to be in my DNA for the rest of my life. Now, I get to see these incredible athletes and live through them. I get to see them high, reach the highest of heights. So, again, I've met some incredible, incredible future Mr. and Miss Olympia champion. And let me tell you something. Brazil 
That'd be funny if they gave it to Tonio. That's what they should do, but you know they're not going to do that. <clears throat> Whoa. It's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, good Vito's uh, tan and stuff wasn't there, and the oil wasn't right. You know, you're a professional. You got to look professional always on stage, and, and uh, he didn't do that. And he needs to work on the posing. Is this the best poser award? Does anyone speak Portuguese, and did they know what this award What did he win? Was his best poser? Oh, he got fifth? This fourth for William? That must be it. Okay, so he's fourth. Third place? Okay, good Vito gets third. Tony Burton's going to be second. We all know, guys. You know, you know what the Tony is. Not happy, but good job. Second at the Arnold. You know, they would be rioting in the streets if they gave it to Tonio. The comparison was bullshit. This is weird. But we all know this was coming. You know, Flex Lewis is there, you know, I mean, it's, it's all kind of pre-planned. So, you know, you know how it works, guys. Let me, though, I don't think it's the wrong way. I think Raphael looks tremendous. I think Raphael can be a top six Olympian. No doubt, but you got to work on the backside. Tonio just gets better and better. Yeah, I'm not sure how William got fourth. But that, that midsection is massive. Look at them, him standing there. So huge. Rafael Gambel, mais um ano no Olímpia, 
Well, there it is, guys. I am not happy about it, but it is what it is. It looks a little pre-planned. Yeah, Vito was in third. Rafael Brandeo first. Tony Burton second. Good Vito in third. William Martin in fourth, surprisingly. And then Andre in fifth. No, Tony is not doing Detroit. New York Pro next. Yeah, I agree, Wilbert. You kind of, you know, you're left with like, uh, what, what just happened there? You know, the judging was dumb. We waited all this time for like 10 to 15. It was, maybe it was 10 minutes. Of, like, that was it. 10 minutes, guys. For the men's feature bodybuilding part of the show, we got 10 minutes. And then women, what, 45 minutes to an hour? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to, I'm going to voice my, my th thoughts on this for a post show recap. I'll be putting that video out shortly. You're going to hear it in that one. So make sure you watch and subscribe. So you get notified when that video comes out, because I'm going all in on the judging for this show in the bullshit that to be just witnessed. Because it's a, it's disgusting to watch that. Yeah, I, I agree. The women deserve their time, but let's let's have some equal time here. The women didn't get there without the men's bodybuilding. Okay, that's where it all started. So let's not push the men's bodybuilding to the side now that there's women in here and it's just like yeah Get the shot there. Is that what's his face? Horse MD. And he looks like he went completely off the gear. This looks like he's. The calves are huge. I agree. Uh, Raphael is great, great bodybuilder, but I think Tony won that show. It was close, but I don't know if De La Rosa, De La Rosa could have won this show. He's a very complete bodybuilder. But I think uh, Tony did enough in the finals to, to win the show. And Raphael didn't do anything, it looks like. Maybe he tightened up a bit from the front, but was the same from the back. So I'm going to be, it's going to be interesting to see the scorecard. But again, we kind of all knew this was going to happen, guys. No matter what Raphael looked like, him being a little bit off like this, they're going to give it to him. They just want it. It's Brazil. It's their only little show, big show that they have. 
they're going to give it to the Brazilian guy. Like, it's kind of, come on. We knew that was coming in a sense. It's unfortunate that ha that takes place in bodybuilding. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they get it wrong. But I want to hear what Tyler Mannion's reasoning is for why Raphael won this show. Because it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't about conditioning. He can't, he can't give him that one. It's it's going to be weird for him to defend that one. Agreed, Juan. If the scorecard is like, it's not even close, it's like a six-point spread, I'll be even more pissed off. So I'm going to wait for the scorecards to come out. Hopefully they come out pretty quick. If not, I'm still going to do my post recap show or uh, video and uh, put that out as quickly as I can. And it's not going to be good. I'm going off in that video with the judging. Tony should have won. Raphael looks soft. I wasn't impressed. I mean, his shape is so good, but I'm just not impressed with the conditioning. And then good video, good pro debut. So I have good things to say about him. And that's about it. I might just do a top three recap. Juan Garcia Jr. Like, there's no way it's a big spread. I feel like the front shots and side shots can be a toss up. Yeah, you're right. Side uh, chest and side tricep can be a toss up. They probably gave that to Raphael because he's bigger. But then the back shots, Raphael loses the um the uh front double bicep front lat spread I give that to um Tonio and that's it. That's why Tonio should win. And then he has the conditioning, the Christmas tree, the the striations in the lower back. Come on. So, all right, guys, the show is done. Thank you for joining in. Again, please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I really appreciate you joining me on the stream. We still got Classic Physique, which is going to be a battle. That's going to be a very good competition. That's tomorrow. I think it's at the same time, 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Brazil time. So... I'll be covering that. All right. It's going to be a good one. Appreciate you guys. I will catch you on the next one. Okay. Look out for my recap video. You know, I'm going to go crazy on that one. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon.